Okay, and uh, welcome to our next session. Our next session is Secrets of Startups and uh, and how do you uncover the best ones and how do you find, uh, and what are, the, what are the criteria for finding the best ones? And we're joined by uh, an amazing panel who are some of the best in the market at, at uncovering the secrets of startups and, the, and, and what makes a great growth startup. So without further ado, we're going to kick off. So Tala, um, welcome. And why don't you just introduce yourself and, and tell us all about the firm. Great, thank you, Frank, for that kind introduction. My name is Tala Al-Jabri. I'm a general partner at Hoff Capital. Hoff Capital is a global early stage tech investor. We have offices um, in New York, uh, San Francisco, and now in Abu Dhabi. Uh, which we're really proud of. Um, I cover uh, fintech at the firm, um, and I closely uh, look at emerging markets, um, as well as closely monitor um, uh, the pipeline um, in Africa uh, and the Middle East. Lovely. And um, uh, so we'll come back to you in a second, Tala. So over to you, Shane. Uh, tell Hello, us all about everyone. the firm. <laughs> Hello everyone, really excited to be here. My name is Shane, I'm a partner at Shurok Partners. Shurok, we focus heavily on the seed up to series A and the FinTech has always been our core uh, sector focus since, uh, since inception in 2016. We're actually headquartered in Abu Dhabi. So that's why it is uh, extremely uh, privileged to be part of this uh, session. And also with uh, a lot of our FinTech focus and plot, I'm really excited to share that a lot of our FinTech companies also have a presence headquarters in Abu Dhabi as well. So thank you, team. Lovely. Thanks, Shane. And over to you, Sonia. Well, apologies. There's a bit of noise on my end. Hi, uh, my name is Sonia Gokhale, and I am one of the general partners at uh, VentureSoup. We uh, are a, a uh, we are a, um, we, we've been global investors in FinTech for a while now, and now are focused on on the MENA region through a fund that's uh, registered at the AG ADGM, so also headquartered in ADGM, which we're uh, very proud of to be alongside uh, my, my fellow panelists there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm a, a Canadian born and raised that's, that's been in, in, in the region for uh, about, uh, about 10 years now. Wonderful. Okay, so let's, uh, let's come back to you, Tala. So, I don't know if you know, but uh, I actually, uh, Onsi uh, did an internship with me in my company all the way back when he was 17 years old. So he spent a summer in London with me uh, and we had, a, we had a great time. So I know Hoff Capital very, very well. Um, in fact, I saw Onsi when he, we started everything off in New York. Um, and so, um, but uh, let's, let's start off. So firstly, um, uh, Tala, let's, let's start off with you. So, what are the key what are the key sectors that you're looking for now and what are the key things that you're looking for from um, from your startups that you you want to invest in well first and foremost frank i'm really uh pleased to hear that you've worked with on sea um or, or that he's worked uh for you and that you're familiar with our firm uh that's amazing to hear um you know we're really always excited um you know when people can uh draw a connection uh to our firm um, and actually, I'll start there. You know, I think being a global firm, having a footprint um, in emerging markets, but also developed markets really gives us a lot of exposure into what's happening in the market and how uh, COVID has had an impact in different markets, right? When we look at, um, you know, how it's played out in the US versus China, um, you know, there are massive implications and particularly in, in, in fintech. Um, when we look at China today, China just put out its quarterly figures, you can see that, you know, merchant activity is quite high, right? And how this is relevant um, for fintech is we all know, right, that COVID has accelerated, you know, a lot of our use of digital services, particularly in fintech, right? It's become increasingly important that users, um, you know, consumers, as well as merchants are connected together online. And so we do see that you know this not only is playing out uh, in dramatic ways um, you know all over the world but also quite differently depending on where you're looking 
And so, you know, we're, we're not necessarily looking at themes that are necessarily fit all for, for all, uh, you know, uh, in, in all markets. But I can tell you, um, you know, particularly in places um, like emerging markets where, you know, there's not a strong uh, social um, safety net, right? I think that there are a lot of considerations being given now to how we can enable credit um, to underserved populations. And so in those markets, um, you know, we've seen emerging markets, um, you know, grow dramatically over the last few decades. But what is COVID do, doing right now, right? Um, is this something that's going to reverse that trend? And so I think that looking at enhancing credit is really important. That's one. Two, I think from institutional perspective, B2B perspective, it's become increasingly important to have cash on hand for a lot of, um, you know, businesses. And so any way that you can leverage existing assets um, or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, turn assets that, you know, were otherwise on your balance sheet into operating assets to free up some cash for yourself and liquidity is increasingly become important, right? Um, the COVID risk sort of factor was not something that people had thought about before, but certainly, um, you know, there are, um, we've, we've seen a lot of solutions come out as of late, particularly out of Asia, that are looking to address um, this challenge. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thanks, Tala. And um, Sonia, how would you, you know, what, what sort of sectors are you looking at now? Uh, and what sort of stages are you looking at um, post-COVID? Just building on what Tala was saying there, I'm sure fintech in, is, is super exciting, of course, now. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, kind of building on what you just said, if, uh, covid uh, as unfortunate as it, as it is, has really accelerated um, fintech, which is, I think, something we really needed in the region. Um, we 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 see we uh, we, gen we generally see we are uh, the region as an evolving market, and it and it's in in and it will, in our opinion, evolve the way the way other markets have that are more developed now. And so <laughs> the way we're seeing them, that we're watching that the same types of trends that we saw elsewhere happen here. So uh, obviously starting with payments as like the foundation uh, and the backbone to FinTech here, now you're seeing a bunch of digital banks coming up, lending as, as, um, as Tala mentioned, being more part of like, you know, something you can do at checkout now. So buy now, pay later has become very, very popular now and, and kind of necessary during tougher times during COVID where people are, are more worried about cash flow issues than they have been in the past. Um, and then something, and then later we see the other items like insure tech, and, and as as it as it develops a bit more. So we're 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 looking across the board in fintech, um, definitely, and and like and anything in fintech is something that we that that uh, piques our interest. But we're seeing the same trends, and um, and we're definitely seeing seeing them early on. So most of these all com these companies are still in the earlier stages, and that's where that's where we're focused at, and as a fund, and that's what uh, what we've been looking at. Okay, so so mainly early stage, so C to Series A, um, and fintech and sure tech is still e-commerce as well. Uh, we are not focused on e-commerce, e but obviously COVID has accelerated that sig sig yep. significantly. Um, and and you know it's made my day, my life easier. I can buy everything online instead of before. So as a consumer, I'm very extremely happy for it. But yet, but it 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 is. And if you actually look at the VC dollars in the last quarter that was spent. Um, in the region, uh, you know, e-commerce is now kind of taken over fintech and, and is now the, the highest amount of uh, getting the most amount of funding at this point. Um, so it's it, it's a huge, it's a huge focus for the for the region. So building on there, Shane, why don't you um, yeah tell us what what sort of sectors and areas that you're going for stages? So um, let me actually dissect this in two ways. So we as a Shorok, we heavily focus on fintech platform and software companies. But uh, that's uh, actually quite a standard. But what I really want to emphasize is we believe that right now in the region, which uh, we focus heavily on, is a perfect time to start looking for this uh, B2B transactions, the B2B infrastructure place. That's why, so this actually B2C used to be the most common form of, uh, let's say, uh, sectors across in our region for the last many years, because it is easier to build or UI, UX, a customer facing app. It's easier to build customer facing a platform. And uh, frankly, the B2B side is, it requires a lot more sophisticated tech and also the regulation tends to be a lot more 
let's say, uh, hard, uh, difficult to, to uh, overcome. So it takes some time to develop. And we truly believe now over the last uh, five years, a lot of uh, engineering, the talents, the, the, the regulation landscape, a lot of that has been developed. Now we actually start to see a lot of uh, infrastructure innovation on the B2B side. That's what we invested in Lean, we invested in NIMCAR, they're all touching on the FinTech infrastructure space. Now to summarize what Tala and uh, Sonia uh, mentioned, which I also love and agree, the way I look at it is we're really decentralizing everything that the bank offers. Normally I say the bank offers uh, six different products. They do KYC, they do saving, you do investing, uh, remittance, payments, and lending. And if you think about every single sector, segment or the services offered by a bank is being disrupted by startups. We can talk about so many mobile wallets in the saving, remittance market, lending market. There's so much uh, C2B, B2B, a lot of crowdfunding lending. A lot of that is really uh, coming up. Payments, BNPL that uh, Sonia mentioned is also being heavily disrupted. We look at every single one of them. We love every single one of them and we're just in our view, it is better time to invest more on the deeper, on the infrastructure level versus on the B2C that touches the customers directly. And this we're sure we're focusing heavily on. For the last four years, we heavily focused more on the B2C side, but now we're ready to focus on the B2C, uh, B2B side. Very interesting. Okay, well, great. Well, that gives us, I think, everybody a, a really good grounding of where you guys are looking at in the, in the future. So, so Tyler, back to you. Um, in fact, all of you guys. So here's a, here's the one. So I'd like to know the top three things that you're looking for in in uh, in founders and teams these days. Let's 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 say great founders is is the same for everyone. So so what else are you looking for when it comes to seed and and Series A companies? What type of metrics? What type of you know, team growth, sort of like, what are the key factors that you think companies should be looking at? So let's take a, let's take seed first. So if you're a seed company, you're looking to get to a series A, uh, what are you looking for from that? And that, that's going to be the same question for each one of you guys and jump in at any time. So when you, when you want to. Uh, so Tyler, do you want to kick off first? Uh, you know, I'm happy to kick off, and I think it's a great question, uh, Frank. I, I appreciate that. Um, I think, you know, when you are looking at seed stage companies, I don't think much has changed, to be honest, um, since COVID has happened, right? I think that, you know, the way that we um, evaluate companies, particularly, you know, in the seed stage when they haven't had a lot of traction, as you mentioned, a lot of emphasis is on the team. Um, I think it's really important. Um, to you know, uh, work with teams um, or, or partner with teams who um, are really strong, who've worked together in the past, who've demonstrated in the past that they're willing to roll up their sleeves and you know, work hard, um, teams that, whose values align with ours, and, you know, and also teams who have really, really big ambitions, right? Um, you know, I think that's really, really um, important. Um, when we look at you know, partnering with, you know, and at the seed, level, it really is about the teams. Um, you know, again, I think, you know, they might have uh, an MVP, they might have some, you know, um, some, some, some ARR um, that's, you know, coming up, um, you know, as well as, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, they've joined, uh, they've, they've uh, signed on, um, you know, some, some merchants, you know, so the traction can be, um, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, th th there's just not a whole lot to, to go off um, on that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I would say that, you know, those things haven't, haven't necessarily changed, right? Um, and I think when we actually talk to companies, um, we often ask the question, where can we add value to you, right? We want to partner with you if we feel like we can add value, um, if we feel like we are partners to you. So, um, you know, uh, so when we, look at, when we look at businesses, we do often think about, you know, how we can sort of drive you know, not only collaboration across our portfolio, but also among the network that we have and the markets that we have access to and the enterprises we have access to. Good, good, good. I mean, that's brilliant. Okay, cool. Sonia, um, as you're going, adding on to that, and, and also we, because we're, we're running a little short on time, like Series A as well. So from C to Series A. I just I'll, perhaps if you'll indulge me, I'll give you a couple of examples where we came in earlier into companies and and they they now appear to be let's hope <laughs> well, kind of 
di like um, like uh, diamonds in the rough or or you know kind of um, amazing companies. Uh, we invested in a company that's called Kata Books in in India, and and really what it is is it's an online ledger system that they that they gave to um, kind of mom and pop shops who are completely doing everything with literally a, a book and a pen uh, before and and like uh, and keeping track of all of their credit that they've been issuing out which is what how how often how things run in in, in in countries like this where everything is done on credit and they and they eventually get they eventually get the money back they and so it became an online ledger and this company has kind of from, we came in an early stage and it, and, it, and it blew up. What and what interested us in the company is the um, kind of exactly what Shane was saying before this B, this kind of B2B types offering that your sales process is quicker and it's entirely digital. It's an entirely software company that can can really doesn't need anything physical at, at, at all. So you're so what and so once you do start, you know, pushing the button and, and charging for these guys, um, initially the margins are can, can be very high. You can offer more offer um, more services, et cetera, and build on those on those on those customers or those clients once you get them. And and that 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 that, that uh, one is kind of blown up. They just raised a, a sixty million dollar Series B funding round from B, uh, which was led by B Capital. Um, very similarly, um, on Fido is a similar on Fido is one of the companies we invested in. Uh, very similar to B, kind of a B two B kind of play. And what we look at is can this even at an early stage can this company be global? Um, exactly what Tala mentioned, you know, the team, et cetera. Can these guys do it? And can this company be global or, you know, can, they, can this go out of the region it is right now and it, can it blow up? And this is also one of those ones that's software play that can completely grow. So on, on Fido is online um, verification of uh, identity uh, and, it, and, and now has raised a uh, hundred million dollar round during COVID led by TPG. Uh, and this is a became a, glo a global company with high margins, and those are the types of companies that we look for. Is how can it can it go across borders? Can and and is this something that you know is solving a problem that you need right now? Is this the team to do it? Um, and can they get the funding to do so? And those are very 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 key things. And then my last that's great goes to the can they get the funding to do it is Pay Mongo in Philippines. That was led by Stripe. So Stripe went into that market, not building itself, but investing in a similar company that's building it. And and because of that, they just led their Series A. Um, so instead of going in, so even Stripe said, "I'm not even going to try to build it here. I'm going to I'm going to invest in a, in a company that's already there, that's building it for me, and could be an acquisition target later." I think perfect, Shane. B two B. Come on, tell us what what are you looking for in Seed Series A. So I'll give you a specific one because I'm sure all of us, especially the audience, uh, we we do have our own uh, thoughts on the great uh, founders and the visionaries. So I we especially for fintech founders, I think there are two really important ones. First, the fintech founder or CEO is very different from an e-commerce or other sectors. You really need to know how to overcome or cope with the regulators. The regulatory landscape, you really need to be extremely familiar with it. You might be the best CEO who actually do not know how to do that, or you might not be the you might not know how to actually cope with the regulators. So this is one of the key things we look at, especially when we are leading the seed rounds, because uh, we love to come and lead the pre-seed and seed rounds. And 45% of our first checks were pre-revenue, so we take that early stage risk, and we need to be comfortable that the founders can know how to overcome that. So that's key. Second is uh, I think this applies to all the founders. For us, we do love to hear the stories, how they started their journey. So like uh, some people just see the opportunity, some people actually do out of necessity, but we want to really understand what's the driving passion, uh, why they started this in the first place. And uh, we want to resonate with that. And also as uh, Sonia and Tala said, we want to make sure we can be helpful to their journey. So these are some of the really high level things. I would love to uh, spend more time with uh, you, but I understand we don't have too many time today, but uh, we don't. More. Lovely, Shane. All right. Okay. Quickly. Last one, guys. I want one sector for 2021, 2022, which you are most excited about. Uh, Tala. The NPL. <laughs> what? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Buy now, pay later. <laughs> oh, buy now, pay later. Of course. Right. Sonia. Uh, I, I agree with Tala. Buy now, pay later is, is, is definitely a good one. And, and also with Shane and the NPL. 
character plays. So we're, we're really looking at those two very carefully. Klarna, Klarna for the Middle East. Fantastic. Okay, Shane? I say uh, lending. Like uh, it's actually lending. a similar form, a similar form of PMPO, but I, I, like, I, I like to call it lending. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, listen, thanks, guys. That was brilliant um, all around. So uh, thanks again for your time and um, appreciate it. That was right on target. Uh, Thank thanks. you, everyone. Cheers, Thank guys. You. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.